warm welcome from the Montgomery County Office of Consumer Protections Program on the Maryland Homeowner Assistance Fund, featuring the Housing Initiative Partnership, Inc. Um, as I mentioned, this is a recorded program and will be made available on our YouTube channel, ConsumerWise, next week. Um, it will be available under the webinars playlist. Um, a special thank you to consumer attorney Philip Robinson, who will be moderating this program. Mr. Robinson serves as a member of OCP's Advisory Committee on Consumer Protection, and we thank him and Housing Initiative, Op Housing Initiative uh, Partnership for the time on this program. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Philip Robinson and we welcome you to this presentation. Um, We're today gonna talk about a new program that will be uh, published soon and it's designed to help homeowners in particular situations. The Homeowner Assistance Fund was um, part of the American Rescue Plan Act that was enacted in March earlier this year. Uh, and we are very happy to have with us uh, two experts uh, in this field who work for uh, Montgomery County's Housing Initiative Partnership, a nonprofit bona fide housing counseling agency in Montgomery County that helps homeowners uh, with us today. And they're gonna walk us through the program uh, Mary Hunter is the director of HIP, uh, and Carmen Castro Conroy is a managing housing counselor there. And Carmen also previously testified in front of Congress. So we are very pleased to have both of them lead us through this important program that's going to help some homeowners who are coming out of forbearance and have had a reduction of income due to COVID. So with that, Mary, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Philip. And um, Philip will be our, our faithful moderator today. So thank you so much. I think he'll be looking and monitoring the chat um, for any of you who want to put any questions or thoughts, please don't wait. Go ahead and add those in the chat. We'll get to those um, throughout the presentation. And at the end of the presentation, we'll save plenty of time for Q&A. Um, so Thank you so much um, for your moderating skills and thank you especially to um, the Montgomery County Office of Consumer Protection for hosting this really great and important webinar um, to talk about the Homeowner Assistance Fund. Uh, we want to wish you happy 50 years. I've worked with the Office of Consumer Protection for the last 20 years and they are just done you know, so much important creative work um, in Montgomery County to help uh, protect consumers and root out scams um, wherever they appear. So we're, we're very happy to have this partnership. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are. Uh, Housing Initiative Partnership is a nonprofit. Um, we have been, um, we've set, founded about 32 years ago. Um, and our vision, as you see, is that everyone um, should have affordable, healthy, and safe housing. Um, we achieve that by doing affordable housing development and direct services. So we are a nonprofit um, multifamily developer, and we um, have offices in um, Prince George's County and Montgomery counties. Um, and we've been developing multifamily housing for the last 30 years uh, and providing really um, high quality resident services to the uh, apartment complexes that, um, that we manage and have built. We also have a single family home um, rehabilitation and new construction uh, department. And I would encourage everyone to go look at our website. We often have houses that are coming onto the market that our single family home um, team has uh, acquired and rehabbed gut, gut renovations, beautiful houses, um, and go onto the market for usually at or below uh, market value for sale to um, low and moderate income home buyers. And um, I'm the director of the housing counseling program. And so that's sort of the third uh, piece of what we do. Um, and we provide direct housing counseling services in on a range of different housing topics. Um, so everything from 
um, working with families that are experiencing homelessness up to helping um, individuals and families prepare for home ownership, buying their first homes. And specifically, um, the, the kinds of housing counseling that we provide, again, are homelessness prevention. Uh, we have a rapid rehousing program that helps rapidly rehouse families. Our housing counseling team provides rental counseling. Um, so anyone who's experiencing uh, difficulty paying their, their rent, they're facing eviction, they're having an issue with their landlord, uh, maybe they need to locate rentals, they can work with one of our counselors to do that, um, to address those needs. And uh, we also work uh, sort of what, why we're here today, we do um, foreclosure prevention and mortgage default counseling. Um, and we have, most of the counselors on our staff uh, have been working in, in that area since the last foreclosure crisis. So very experienced with helping people navigate um, any sort of hard financial hardship uh, with their mortgage lender. And um, think we encourage everyone to reach out who may be experiencing um, that problem. And finally, uh, we all we provide um, home ownership counseling where we work with, which is sort of the happy place uh, of our organization where we work with people to make sure that they um, connect with really high quality mortgage products and um, achieve sustainable home ownership. And um, the, the offices in Montgomery County um, are located in the city of Gaithersburg and in Germantown in the Upcounty Regional Service Center. And currently our housing counseling, our housing counselors are on site, um, available, available to provide in-person counseling. Um, we also provide um, teleconferencing and virtual counseling for anyone who's concerned about COVID. Um, we, we have the same services available uh, that can be provided virtually. So with that, I will um, advance the slide and we'll get into our presentation today, which is introducing the Homeowner Assistance Fund. And I'm going to introduce Carmen Castro, who is HIP's managing counselor extraordinaire. And um, I will just preface that this is a, a new program um, for Maryland, and we are learning more about it every day. Um, it will be launched on December 20th. So what we will share with you today is what we know so far. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Carmen. Thank you, Mary. And thank you to the uh, Office of Consumer Protection for inviting us to share this information with homeowners and providers in Montgomery County. And I wanna congratulate uh, all the staff on their 50th anniversary and all the valuable work that you do every day in serving residents of Montgomery County. So we're here to learn uh, more about what the Maryland Homeowner Assistance Fund is. And I'm all tried my best in sharing that information with you all. So the Homeowner Assistance Fund, known as HAF, is an award under Section 3206 of the American Rescue Plan that authorizes the U.S. Department of Treasury to provide assistance to households that have experienced financial hardships related to the COVID-19 pandemic by providing funds to those homeowners for the purpose of preventing loss of housing. In the state of Maryland, um, this program will be administered by the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. And the program uh, will be taking applications through an online portal. Our role um, with the Department of Housing and Community Development as a housing counseling agency is to provide assistance to homeowners who may be eligible for this program that may not have the um, technology to submit a application online. And we are one of the housing counseling agencies that will be providing that service. So HALF uh, has uh, two components, the Maryland Homeowner Assistance Fund Grant and the Maryland Homeowner Assistance Fund Loan. 
you can see the amount that has been allocated for the grant, 34 million. And for the loan um, component, 156,300,521. So the program is expected to start on uh, December 20th of this year. So just in a few days and will stay open until September 30th of 2026 or until funding is fully committed. Mm -hmm. So that's also very important to know. Um, in regards to the general eligibility requirements for both components, um, we know that in order to be eligible under half, all homeowners will have to meet the following criteria be eligible under a COVID-19 financial hardship that could have taken place after January 21st of the year 2020. Also to be Maryland residents and homeowners residing in their primary residence. Also homeowners will have to provide evidence of the deed of trust. So this is the primary eligibility requirement for the program for both either the grant or the loan. So we're gonna to go to the next slide. This slide covers the criteria, purpose, eligibility, and the terms under the half grant uh, portion of the program. So the purpose of the grant is that it is designed to avoid imminent displacement due to, but not limited to, mortgage delinquency. So we're starting to hear from homeowners who um, due to loss of income related to the COVID pandemic may have not been able to make their mortgage payments on time, may have already requested forbearance with the mortgage companies. So mortgage delinquency is uh, one of the purposes of creating this portion of the program. But also homeowners and condo association fee delinquency will be considered as part of this grant to homeowners. Now, we just have to keep in mind that this uh, type of delinquency would have to be documented and show that it started after January 21st of 2020, and it was related to loss of income due to COVID. It can also cover property tax delinquency, so we have many homeowners who struggle to pay their property taxes. They may not have a mortgage anymore. They may be retired, relying on social security income to pay their property taxes. And for uh, other reasons may have um, not been able to pay those um, bills and may need assistance through this program. So property taxes, mortgages, HOA, condo associations, and homeowners insurance delinquency. So this, are the type of payments that the grant could help homeowners with. In regards to eligibility, like I said, um, homeowners will have to show COVID-19 related financial hardship. Also, this program is only um, available to households that uh, area median income falls under 100%. So we will have access to that specific information and uh, determine whether those households who uh, uh, approach our services for assistance meet the income criteria. And um, a third one would be Maryland homeowners primary residence. So that can be documented with either uh, the proof of uh, residence, um, sometimes copies of their income taxes, bank statements, uh, pay stubs, um, documentation that shows primary residence. So in regards to the terms of the um, half grant portion, uh, it's, it's what it is, it's a grant. So there is no uh, lien recorded on, on this grant. The maximum amount of assistance is $10,000 for per household. So that's basic information in regards to the grant portion of the program. I think we can move to the next slide that describes the loan portion. So very similarly, uh, the purpose of the loan under this program is that it's designed to offer a one-time time payment of a delinquent mortgage amount. In regards to eligibility, it's very similar than the eligibility that's gonna be used to the, um, 
for the grant portion since, uh, again, COVID-19 related financial hardship. Um, for the loan portion, the area median income goes up to 150%. Remember the grant portion was 100% of area median income. The loan portion is 150%. And again, um, homeowners eligible will have to show that they um, occupy their um, home as their primary residence. In regards to the terms under this portion of the program, um, the loan will uh, issue a recorded lien on the property. So that's different from the grant. Uh, also the maximum loan amount will be 30,000 per household. That's also a different amount than the grant, which is a max of 10,000. So for the loan to homeowners, the maximum amount will be 30,000, 0% interest with deferred payments and payments will be due in full when um, the household refinances the loan or sells the property. So those are the two primary components of the Maryland Homeowner Assistance Fund um, that will be um, available to not just residents in Montgomery County, but statewide. And Maryland is one of the first states in the nation that is ready to get started. And uh, like I said at the beginning, um, this program uses treasury funds. So um, it will be available nationwide. The description of the terms and the eligibility of this program are ap applicable to all homeowners in Maryland. And therefore homeowners in Montgomery County will also be able to, to apply for this program. Next slide. So in regards to the access to the homeowners assistance fund, the Department of Housing and Community Development has um, created a section under their website and that provides basic information, including uh, uh, fact sheets um, with a lot of the information we're sharing today that homeowners can visit. And I highly recommend that uh, you all check this website www.homeownerassistance.maryland.gov. Um, that up, um, website will be updated. And currently, um, DHCD has a section where homeowners can sign up and get an email with a notification once the program opens. So we also encourage homeowners who are waiting for the program to start to visit the website homeownerassistance.maryland.gov and uh, they have the option to sign up and get a notification from DHCD when the program opens. There's also a call center for all Maryland residents. It's a hotline called the Maryland Homeowner Assistance Hotline. The number is 1-877-462 7555. That hotline will provide uh, information on agencies that can assist homeowners throughout the state, uh, homeowners that may need a help in submitting their application and talking to a housing counseling agency to determine if they are going to be eligible. And third, um, the role that we as, a, as housing counseling agencies play in a partnership with the state of Maryland, um, there's going to be a list of ha approved housing counseling agencies throughout the state that will provide assistance to homeowners. We do not charge for our services, um, and we have a team of certified housing counselors who are ready and trained to start with the day that this program starts. Next slide. I uh, do want to take the opportunity to describe our uh, housing counseling services to all participants today. Um, like you heard Mary at the beginning um, talk about our agency uh, and the work that we've been doing. Uh, we've been uh, having a presence in Montgomery County since 2009 during the uh, foreclosure crisis. Uh, our focus was to serve homeowners who were um, at risk of foreclosure or risk of losing their homes. 
And ever since we have expanded and now we are a comprehensive housing counseling agency with all of our staff uh, certified as housing counselors. Um, our staff is also bilingual in uh, English and Spanish. And our services are not limited to homeowners. We also serve tenants through our rental counseling program and our financial capability program. But for the purpose of this presentation, I am going to describe some of the services that we provide to homeowners for free. So our counselors will uh, meet with homeowners who may be experiencing a financial hardship and will assess all mortgage retention options, including repayment plans, forbearance, and modifications. Um, it's also part of our assessment to discuss non-retention options, including short sales and uh, selling the property. Um, we can also negotiate payment plans with a homeowner associations and condo associations on behalf of our clients. Uh, our housing counselors provide assistance with um, applying for any type of programs that are available to homeowners, including this homeowner assistance fund. We screen clients for eligibility for the homeowners tax credit program. Uh, many, especially seniors, uh, homeowners in our county are not aware of the homeowners tax credit program and um, meet the criteria, but if they do not submit an application, they just don't get the credit and pay a lot of money on taxes where they could um, benefit from um, what this program offers them. So every time we meet with a, with a homeowner, is, especially with senior homeowners, we screen them for eligibility for the homeowners tax credit program. We mm -hmm. can also identify homeowners who could benefit from our um, home sharing program, where um, sometimes we see uh, situations where uh, households are struggling to pay their mortgage or other um, expenses but they have plenty of room in their homes that they could like rent for additional income. So we try to match homeowners with home seekers in a very safe manner with a, a platform called Silver Nest. And we have dedicated staff that will um, meet with homeowners and explain how the program works and determine if they want to participate and what kind of support they need in order to find a good match. So that's our home sharing program. But we also provide information and referrals to other assistance programs, including programs that um, provide assistance with utility um, and other uh, referrals to food uh, programs or anything else that we identify the household may need. So I, I would like to go to the next slide uh, for any questions that anybody may have already submitted through the chat or would like to ask, and also uh, share our contact information. That's the next slide. In case you need to reach us, uh, you can always um, go to our website for all a full description of our services, but you can always give us a call at uh, this number 301-916-5926. Uh, we have two offices in Montgomery County. Our, our main office is at the Up County Regional Service Center, located on 12900 Middlebrook Road, Suite 1500, Germantown. So with that, I'll be uh, open to any questions. So, um, Carmen, we had one uh, question that sort of uh, someone asked about scams and they see a lot of signs in the roadway or, um, you know, hey, we can stop a foreclosure, we can help you. And, and do you have any recommendations about, you know, what, what, what are those things that are legit and, and where should people go for help? And are, are those services legit? Sure. Unfortunately, every time we're dealing with a crisis, the scams tend to increase and we our basic like um recommendation is um to be very cautious if um you're um uh, someone is contacting you uh, 
uh, with uh, offer to solve uh, whatever mortgage situation you may have and maybe requesting upfront fees, that's a red uh, flag. Also attorneys that may be reaching out to consumers from out of state, that's another red flag. So in general, don't respond to any signs that you may see on the road. Um, don't respond to any type of unsolicited requests. And uh, every time you see offers that sound too good to be true or offer to like, fix the problem or um, rescue or avoid uh, for <coughs> uh, I would I would say to be very cautious. Yeah, so uh, I've been seeing a, a sort of a new flavor of um, scams or potential scams where with some of my clients that didn't happen before. Now, because the digital era, people get texts unsolicited text from somebody you didn't know that says, hey, I want to buy your house. I want to save your house. And, and part of that's coming from data is sold, you know, by the credit reporting agencies and by mortgage companies. And somehow it ended up in a very sophisticated list and, and solicitors who may be legit or may not be, but you don't know who they are. They start sending text. So a lot of my clients have been really uncomfortable with that. Um, I, I just want to emphasize a couple points on the scams thing before we go to the next question that Carmen just pointed out. If, if someone's asking for money to help you with a loan modification, that's a tell that it's it's not likely a legitimate service. It's probably not lawful under Maryland law, um, depending on the circumstances. And there are bona fide housing counseling agencies like HIP who provide free services better than any anybody else is doing it for for profit. So I would just say be cautious there. And then, you know, a fair amount of signs that you see out on telephone poles or in the median on car, car strips, uh, that, that's not really a way to engage someone. So you wanna make sure that you engage someone who is recognized. And I, and I strongly recommend to my clients to only work with a housing counseling agency recognized by the state of Maryland's programs because they've been vetted. Uh, and generally in nonprofit organizations. So in that way, um, uh, we yeah. have another. Can I jump in on that um, scam discussion and also just encouraging people, you know, to to locate the housing counseling agencies using the HUD website. Um, so you know, as Carmen mentioned, in these times of financial crisis, the scams proliferate. They are very sophisticated in the way that they appeal. Um, to people who are feeling nervous and vulnerable. And so you might, you know, there might be um, a scammer who presents themselves as a HUD approved housing counselor. Um, so you really want to double check who you're dealing with and you can go to the um, HUD website and find the housing counseling, HUD approved housing counseling agency nearest you. Um, and I'll put the the website address in the chat for you. Just important to, to always be sure that you are talking to a HUD approved housing counseling agency. And for this program half, um, I am fairly sure that the state is contracting with both HIP as well as LEDC, Latino Economic Development Corporation to assist people with the applications who, who need assistance. So. And, and I would just say that it's really helpful to use a housing counselor. It's not required for these programs to help you on this program because they can help if there's a problem uh, and they'll make sure your application is complete. And if they need to, if an appeal needs to be made, they'll, they'll be able to help you with that aspect. So I really encourage my clients to work with a housing counselor agency in this kind of situation. Um, we had another question during the presentation, Carmen, um, that someone's in foreclosure or potential foreclosure, but they're equity rich in their house and they'd like to sell it. Um, is there something that can be done in that instance um, as a housing counselor to help uh, the borrower who's in that situation? Uh, sure. Uh, we have I met mean, with families, uh, homeowners in the past that um, they couldn't afford their regular mortgage payments, but at the same time, they have plenty of equity. 
And we just sit with them and see other options, including selling the property. Uh, sometimes they have a house that's too big and they, they agree to downsize or, or they have all their children that live out of state and, and um, are interested in, in moving into other areas. There, there's so many situations. We just sit down with them, look at uh, their, the income coming in and the expenses. Sometimes not just the mortgage could be an affordable, but in a larger home, it's usually higher utility bills and uh, higher taxes. So we take a look at everything, especially when um, we're dealing with homeowners who whose incomes are fixed and are not going to increase. So that's one of the conversations we have with them. Right. And I would say, you know, if the person, if a foreclosure has been filed, and let me just take a time out to walk everybody through that time paper table, uh, a foreclosure action is filed in the circuit court so in Montgomery County. That's in the circuit court for Montgomery County. And there's a process and a timeline that has to take place. And during that process and timeline, a homeowner who uh, has entered into a contract to sell their house, uh, hopefully to save the equity that's in it for themselves, uh, can use the process to stop a foreclosure. Uh, but it's really important that you reach out as quickly as possible to a housing counselor. And if necessary, they'll refer you to legal services that can help um, in those situations. But a homeowner who waits till it's too late, that equity may be lost. So it's, it's I think, the holistic approach of reaching to the counselor agency and getting some feedback about their situation. And then they can connect you with the other wraparound services that may be necessary or helpful is um, something to look at. Uh, so, so yeah, things can happen. Um, there was another question um, during the presentation that had to do with um, people with disabilities and do they qualify for these programs or widows or widowers? Um, so Carmen, what about that? Um, as far as I know, there there's no specifics about groups that may meet other criteria like disability. I also see veterans or uh, widows, but the general criteria for this program is that if you can document that you lost income due to COVID, this will be the program that will um, provide the assistance that you may be looking for. There may be other programs outside of HAF, the Homeowners Assistance Fund, that may be specific for groups that uh, have been dealing with other um, types of hardships, but this particular program has to do with COVID-19. So Carmen, let me ask you a follow-up on that point that you just made about the, one of the eligibility factors, because I have a client who um, was uh, um, had a reduction of income before COVID, um, but during COVID, that reduction of income increased. They were using the savings to keep the loan current until probably right early on in COVID. Um, would they, even though they had the re a reduction, you know, earlier, would they be eligible for this program as you understand it? Yes, and let me uh, uh, cover that information just um through this fact sheet coming from DHCD, it does say that eligible homeowners must have experienced a COVID-19 related financial hardship as defined in the US Treasury Department guidance after January 21st, 2020. And then it does say, including hardships that began before January 21st, 2020, but continued after that date. So I um, hope that answers the question that as long as this household can document of a financial hardship related to COVID. And we have the date of January 21st, 2020, but it could also be a hardship that began before that date. So uh, I would encourage homeowners to contact the housing counseling agency to talk about the uh, requirements and the eligibility criteria. And as part of the um, documenting the hardship, homeowners will be required a self-attestation. So we're gonna uh, look for more guidance from the HCD in regards to uh, a, a proof of COVID-related financial hardship. 
and the self attestation. Right. And so it's really important when you're applying, you want to get qualified. You don't want anybody to be double checking and, and say that you submitted incorrect information uh, to make sure you got your documentation in order in case they ask for it. So I think working with the counseling agency who can help you figure out what documentation you need to prove or have or show or, or find to show that reduction of income, they, they'll be able to help you do that, I think. Um, all right, so there was another question, Carmen, uh, was from someone asking, are there additional benefits? Um, I'm gonna qualify the question a little bit, are services for veterans applying for this program or other related services? Not that we know of. Okay, but there are, let's, let's assume if it's a veteran, they might have a VA mortgage loan. So are there services you know, outside of this program under the VA loan program to help folks who yes. have those kinds of loans? Yes, yes, definitely. VA loans are great loans in general, not just when uh, you're uh, dealing with a financial hardship, but are like the best loans and are not eligible to everyone uh, for that purpose um, because um, we know how when we have like veterans coming to our home buyer class and that's one of the questions we ask make sure that you look into VA loans because of the benefits. Um, we also wanna make sure that you do the same if, if you are a veteran with a VA loan and you have been impacted by COVID-19 to contact your servicer because of the uh, types of plans that are available and their VA loans are really good. Um, this half program is uh, for all homeowners regardless of the type of loan you have. So VA loans, um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, conventional will be treated as much, uh, I would say, similarly under this program. So, so I think the moral of your answer there is even if this particular program might not be specific for your issue, whether it's veterans or disability, still go to the housing counseling agency because there's probably some other program or services that may help your situation. So make sure you talk to a housing counseling agency about that. Okay. Yes. Uh, Philip, let me just add, I know Carmen had mentioned previ previously the homeowner's tax credit. Um, it's really helpful for people, especially who have disabilities. Um, and there's a, the, the eligibility criteria for people with disabilities and older adults is uh, not quite as stringent as it is for others. So it's, it's an opportunity for um, reducing your property taxes uh, if you're eligible. And I would certainly encourage everybody, as Philip said, you know, to work with a housing counselor to see if you are potentially eligible for that program and to submit an application. It's a very undersubscribed state um, benefit. And um, we we try every time, every chance we get to get the word out to the community that it's available because it can really, really help people who are on a fixed income um, afford their mortgage. Mary, that's a great example because the state gives this benefit, but they don't really advertise it. Um, and you have to re request that benefit typically annually. And I can recall just by way of an example, one client of mine who I was helping with the mortgage problem at the same time we were able to get her to a counseling agency and she was qualified for uh, the tax credit and she had no or very small amount of property taxes, but her escrow payment portion of her mortgage because of that dropped from like $400 a month to maybe $50. So that made a big difference for her. So another good reason to, to help work, the counselors can help you weave your way through those systems because the state's not going to be terribly helpful there. Um, all right, we had another question, Carmen. This is a little uh, complicated for math challenged individuals like me, uh, but here's the question, okay? What if I owe, I owe 63,000 in default and I just made $32,000 in annual income? Can I apply for help under the HALF program? So one of the things that uh, our assessment will determine is that homeowners will be able to pay their mortgage 
moving forward after they get approval from the HAF program to pay what, what's the, the uh, default. So, and that has a level of 40% of um, housing payment compared to the total household income. So it looks like for this program, homeowners will have to show that they're gonna be able to sustain their housing payments afterwards. Uh, we're gonna have to look at all the um, options available to homeowners if they're gonna need to work on increasing income to be able to show and um, document that they will be able to pay those, uh, make those payments afterwards. So that's gonna be a criteria that the state will be uh, using to determine eligibility. So, so in one of Carmen, I would say, um, again, this is a perfect question for someone to go to a counseling agency where way on their face, $63,000 will exceed the amount of money that's available from both the grant and the loan program of half. But if the homeowner is able to obtain a modification that doesn't require a $63,000 down payment, uh, and makes the loan payment affordable going forward, you may be able to use the HAF program as a bridge to get to that point. So I would really encourage a homeowner in that kind of situation with a lot of money in default, um, a lower income to work with the counseling agency because there may be some creative ways to use the funds that are available um, and, and I would say I'm a little more optimistic that this might be workable with some mortgage lenders these days because there's the marketplace has sort of changed. Um, we have different people who own loans like these uh, who have some more flexibility and their main interest is trying to get as much cash as they can quickly. And so you may have certain loan owners who might be eligible or interested in modifying the loan, making it a reperforming loan that's affordable if they're able to get some some lump sum money up front and the half part of the half funds may be able to serve that purpose. So again, I'd say go to the counseling agency with your details and they're willing to be creative with you. I think they are. Carmen, is that safe to say? Yes, definitely. Um, I would encourage all homeowners who may be dealing with any type of financial hardship to contact us regardless of whether they meet the criteria for this specific program. Uh, this is a program that will be available to those who, again, lost income due to COVID. But there are other programs that uh, servicers offer to homeowners and housing counselors have been trained to identify what programs are um, available and what homeowners meet the criteria for before submitting an application. So it sounds like the, uh, the Department of Housing Community Development portal will be taking applications from homeowners that, was, that can submit all the documentation through the portal, but coming through a housing counseling agency will um, make it easier on homeowners who may not have all the criteria by the time they may be um, willing to or ready to submit. And they can still work with the housing counseling agency and not just gathering all the documentation that's required, but in really determining if they meet all the eligibility to submit a, a, an application. Okay, there was a question about when's the program's website gonna be up and running. It was yesterday, part of it, and I just posted a link to part of it today. Um, so I think they're just, it, it, we're, we're hoping, and I think if I understood correctly, the program goes live on the 20th. So I think the answer to the question is that, but if you go to the link I just posted in the chat, or if you're watching the recording of this, you can Google Maryland Homeowner Assistance Fund, DHCD. That will get you to the page and you can register yourself as Carmen said earlier. So you get an email when the program is up and running. Um, it, it looks like it's currently under DHCD's um, website. So you can all like Google Homeowner Assistance Fund Maryland and we'll take you there or use the link that uh, you provided, Philip, and it will take you right to the page where you can sign up 
with um, it's, it's for homeowners to sign up, or you can read additional information. They posted uh, fact sheets uh, on this week on Monday that has all basically all the information that we have covered today. And I'm sure as it gets closer to the date the program starts, there will be more announcements. And the, I know DHCD has um, shared with us their marketing um, plan that includes uh, ads on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, radio ads, direct mail, digital ads, and other marketing materials that I'm sure we'll be having access to that we can also share with other agencies and homeowners in Montgomery County. Right, and Kim asked a question about advertising. So Kim, you just got your answer to that. And I would say we're the Montgomery County Office of Consumer Protection and its advisory committee who I'm representing today. We're doing this extra. This isn't anything. I mean, we did this on our own without the state asking us. So I think it's a word of mouth thing and we want Montgomery County residents and, and others who watch this to be access the program that's available to them uh, to help. We're trying to keep homeowners in their houses. So I, I don't think it has to go, we don't have to rely just on the state's advertising. There's plenty of opportunity for everybody listening and watching this to advertise it themselves. So please do. And I would just simply add that if you are looking, if you're Googling for information, be wary if you land somewhere that's not a .gov purporting to speak on behalf of the state. Um, until this thing is full blown and, and running, make sure that your starting point is a .gov website. Okay, so Carmen, there was another good question is, do you have to be behind on your mortgage um, or can you be struggling to pay it? And the term usually is, is that I would describe as an imminent default, so. Well, um, the program requires that um, homeowners be in default to apply for the uh, grant or the loan of the program. So we can look into that with homeowners. Uh, we don't want homeowners to borrow money to pay the mortgage or to cash their 401ks or use credit cards like we've seen homeowners do in the past. Uh, also remain, remember that this program starts in a few days, but will be open expectedly through September of 2026. So if a homeowner may be struggling, but may not be in default as of now, um, we may still provide some guidance to homeowners who may meet the criteria for this particular program or anything else available to them. Right, most loan programs, if you're in imminent default, uh, you are eligible for loss mitigation. So it's another reason to go see a housing counselor. You shouldn't be using your credit card to make your payments and you shouldn't tap your, your um, retirement, even though that's what you might be told on the phone by your mortgage servicer, see a housing counselor. Because uh, if, if, you, if you are in imminent default, but using your savings, it doesn't mean you're ineligible for a program. Um, and I've had lots of clients who've done the right thing and gotten stonewalled by the service. So I just encourage you to see a counselor about that. Uh, there's another question about HELOCs. HELOC is a line of credit that's usually a mortgage loan. Are those eligible for assistance under the HAF program? I would say yes, they are. And if you have more than one loan that's uh, uh, attached to the, to the house, to the property, or there is a lien on the house, that could um, definitely be considered uh, eligible for assistance under either uh, the grant or the loan of uh, the homeowners assistance fund. Um, and, and I would just chime in that there is, um, and I'll put the link to the blog on my website uh, on this. There's a whole industry of what I call zombie seconds. Those are old, mostly old HELOCs or second liens um, that, um have been around for a long time and they're getting bought up by debt buyers um and so if you have one of those you you should certainly see the housing counselor uh and you might be able to get some assistance and use this program to maybe get rid of one of those loan programs but that's it's pretty sophisticated and so you really need to start with the counselor um and um i think you, you should do that all right so then Let's see if we had some more questions here. 
just to tag along to this um, question about advertising, I thought that was a good point that, you know, we are available to speak to any groups that um, are interested to get the word out about half. Um, Carmen and I can, you know, be available to, to, to do this presentation in any other uh, capacity. So um, reach out if that's something you're interested in. So Carmen, there was a, another question about will the payment be direct to the lender? I, I think the answer to that is yes, as we understand it, correct? Yes. And um, from what we have read, it will be electronically uh, submitted to the lender. So it, um, So once you apply and you go through that process and once you're approved, um, the state will work out with the lender a way to send the payment electronically. Now, they did another program like this about 10 years ago, and there were some snags along the way. So if you get into the program, and don't get disillusioned. Just understand it's how things sort of work, and you need to stay on top of it. Um, but I did have some clients who their, their lenders didn't process the payments received from the state correctly. Um, and so, you know, it's just one of those things you got to monitor. It's not going to all take care of itself. It's, yeah. um, uh, somebody, I mean, the expression is, you know, trust, but verify that it actually happens. And, you know, Philip is an attorney who's been doing work in this area for a long time and, you know, has a lot of expertise around helping people with foreclosures um, and foreclosure actions. And, you know, throughout uh, Maryland, and there there are networks um, also of attorneys that are working in this area. And, you know, it's, it's just very important for anyone who gets a court notice, a court document to try to not only just reach out to a housing counseling agency, but try to connect with an attorney who's experienced um, with providing assistance um, for mortgage default. Um, it's the experience piece is important. A lot of attorneys, you know, don't have that experience and you want someone who does and who, who has been working in that area for basically since the last foreclosure crisis is so, yeah. And um, there'll be more information on that from on the website with Maryland DHCD. They, they also have um, contacts for legal service providers. Okay, so um, I did post to everybody my little blog on zombie debts, which are mostly HELOCs and second liens. So you can grab that link and read it later if, you, if that applies to you. Um, if there are any other questions, put them in the chat. Um, and I would just say, I think I want to just repeat, we have HIP's phone number up on the screen, but there is one other agency uh, who's working with the state that you know folks get referred to, and that's... Uh, LEDC, uh, Latino Economic Development Corporation, I believe based in Wheaton. Um, and, you know, there, so there are, uh, there is another agency on the south side of the county that can help folks. Um, and um, we can get their information put on the website um, when we post this um, as well. So I just encourage folks again that the, one of the big takeaways from this session is make sure you're working with a legitimate housing counseling agency to sort of weave your way through these things. They can help connect you with other services that may be needed. So any other, if there's no more questions, and I, I think I, on behalf of the um, office and the advisory committee for the Office of Consumer Protection in honor of its 50th anniversary, we are very lucky in Montgomery County to have such a great agency and staff who've been around for 50 years protecting us. Uh, and, you know, one of the best local agencies in the country. Um, we're happy to share this information uh, with everyone and celebrate their anniversary. And then we have one last question that we can answer. Carmen, uh, why should we wait to default to get help that's, that we're using credit cards to avoid this? Um, it's, it's part of the act. Eligibility criteria. Unfortunately, I wish uh, we could um, work with all homeowners, regardless of whether they are in default or, or about to become delinquent. But the programs are very have very specific criteria, and in this program, is, uh, in particular, talks about the um, 
the actual uh, delinquency. So we have here that um, in, I'm looking at the eligibility to answer your question. Um, one of the um, criteria to be unemployed, have temporarily been unemployed due to COVID for at least three months or lost partial income due to salary reduction, increased expenses due to hardship. So all of that uh, will be taken into consideration and it does say be delinquent and or in forbearance for more than three months but have been current up until January 1st, 2020. So if you were um, in forbearance and you're coming out of forbearance, which a lot of people are, then you may be eligible. And I would say in answer to the question, even though you may not be eligible for half, if, the, if depending on your particular circumstances, there are lots of other programs for borrowers who are in imminent default. And I just would not encourage my clients to be using their credit cards at very high interest rates to keep their mortgage loan current. Um, see a housing counselor and there's likely another program, maybe not this particular one we're talking about today, that can help you if this one can't, okay? So I think again, on behalf of the office and on behalf of the advisory committee, thank you, Carmen and Mary and HIP, Housing Initiative Partnership for this great presentation. Uh, and we wish everyone a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you so much, Philip and Office of Consumer Protection. Thank you again. This has been great and very, very helpful and informative.